Grace and peace. Grace and peace unto all that are believers in Christ and Jesus. Uh, we thank God for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And we pray for souls. We pray for all those who don't know Jesus. We pray that they will give their life over to Jesus Christ and accept him as their personal Savior. Hallelujah. It is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. So we need to understand how to live to die to live again. Amen. How do we do that? Through the word of Jesus. It's in him we live. It's in, in, in him we move. And it's in him we have our being. We thank you for joining us today. We pray that you will call someone up, ask them to come. All we want to do is read. We want to read. And the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. Show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be shamed. Write the dividing word of truth. We have a responsibility to go back and read and study. And ask, uh, ask God to speak to your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And, uh, and watch the power of God move mightily over your life like never before. Let's uh, open up our Bibles to Galatians. Praise be to God. Uh, 2 Timothy tells us in 2 Timothy 3 and 16, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, hallelujah, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. Watch this. In righteousness. So if you want to know how to live right, and you want to be in right standing with Christ Jesus, all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable. God's word is profitable. But you have to read it. You have to study it. Somebody tell you what God says. You go back and ask the Father for yourself. And allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. We thank God for the Father. We thank God for the Son. And we thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So God's word will never return to him void, but will accomplish everything he sent it forth to accomplish. Amen. My job is not to exegete all these scriptures for you and tell you what thus saith the Lord. My job is to get you to read and study and pray and guide you to those, hallelujah, only ones that can help you. The only one that can help you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we want to direct you towards him. But you have to go back and read. You have to go back and study. Galatians chapter 1, hallelujah. It says, Paul, an apostle, not of men, Neither by man, huh? but by Jesus Christ and God, the Father, who raised him from the dead. We thank God. Hallelujah for Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God for his spirit operating in our lives. We were dead in our sin. And because of his death, burial, and resurrection, hallelujah, we live unto righteousness now when we stand on God's promises and invite him into our heart. Romans 10 and 9 says, Thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus Christ with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that he died and rose from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Hallelujah. It says, hallelujah, Father who raised him from the dead. And verse 2 says, And all the brethren, circle that word, brethren, which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Hallelujah. It says, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. God, grace, God's mercy, God's peace, praise be. There's none like it. Hallelujah. You searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Praise be to God. But when you allow yourself to be led by the Spirit of God, you begin to operate in victory. <laughs> You begin to be able to, you're able to operate even in the storm. The storms of life will rage against you. They're coming. But thanks be to God, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It says grace, his unmerited favor, verse 3 says, be unto you in peace. Hallelujah. Where it come from? God the Father. You're looking for peace in all the wrong places. You're looking in your checkbook. You're looking on your job. You're looking at, through your car, your home, all the materialistic things. You're looking for somebody else to bring peace. He's Jehovah Shalom. He is our peace. Praise be to God. I get so excited. Hallelujah. Because I operate in peace. The storms come. The winds blow. Praise be to God. It's some heavy things that come at you on a day-to-day -day basis. Hallelujah. But if you could allow your heart, your spirit man, 
to stay in contact with the Spirit of God, hallelujah, he brings it back to your remembrance. When everything seems to be crumbling around you, praise be to God, the spirit man, hallelujah, rises up, hallelujah. Matter of fact, if you stand on God's promises, you don't have to wait for the spirit man to rise up. He's there. He's leading you and guiding you. Grace be to you and peace. Circle is from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for Jesus. Jesus is the way. Jesus is not one of the ways. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the light. Again, no man cometh unto the Father but by, through, in Christ Jesus. It's in, it's in him we live. It's in him we move. And it's in him we have a being who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us, isn't this good, from this present evil world. I mean, we're not talking about in the sweet by and by after a while he delivers. No, he delivers us when? Now, in this present, now, now, in this present evil world. That's why we have to understand that faith is, but it's not just faith is, now faith is. Not faith is, now faith, now. Yes, you're challenged. Things are coming and going and you seem to be uh, struggling with some things. And then if you could just, hallelujah, allow your spirit man to control and understand that faith is not coming. Now faith, we, we have faith now. The storm is here, the rain is coming, but you have faith now. Hallelujah. It seems like everything is falling apart, but if you could just, hallelujah, know in your knower, in your spirit man, that faith is now, you can walk with your head up in the storm. Hallelujah. When everything is collapsing around you, praise be to God, you can continue to walk by faith and trust God and know that you're not drowning. And know that, praise be to God, you are standing on God's promises in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Grace be to you and peace. Where does it come from? From God, not your bank account. <laughs> hallelujah. And if you're looking for somebody else to make you happy and bring peace to you, hallelujah, if Christ is not in the mix, that temporary peace that you might think you have is so short-lived in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But we're talking about eternal now. We're talking about the eternal peace. Hallelujah. Let not your heart be troubled. It gives you peace that surpasses all understanding. Hallelujah. It says, uh, verse 4 says, who gave himself for our sins, mm, while we were yet sinners, and he, that, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Got to get, got to know God's will. What is God's will for your life? Hallelujah. What is God's will according to the will of God? Hallelujah. Mm. He deliver, might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. For all eternity. There's no end. Hallelujah. There's no end. Hallelujah. All beginning. He just is. To whom? Hallelujah. Be glory. When? Forever and ever. Amen. He says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Mm. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that we have received, hallelujah, let him be accursed. For I, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek 
to please men? For if I yet please man, I should not be the servant of Christ. Hallelujah. When you begin to preach the gospel, everybody's not going to love you. When you preach the gospel, everybody's not going to receive. That's why it says, as many as receive to them gave you power to become the sons and daughters of the Most High God. Pray, pre pre uh, uh, preaching the gospel, hallelujah, it stirs something up, not just in the, uh, those who would believe, but it stirs stuff up in the dark world, in the evil world, in the sinful world, praise be to God. Because you bring light, shining in darkness, undercovering, uncovering all the darkness that would prevail in one's life. You bring light to that darkness. The darkness has to move out. Amen? So the darkness don't like light. So it tries to avoid the light. And it begins to live in its own dominion. What makes comfortable, him or she comfortable, that darkness has to be moved out in order for you to have the peace of God. A peace that surpasses all understanding. Hallelujah. We're not talking about a temporary peace because you got a good meal or because some money's come through. Praise be to God. That's all temporary stuff. But when you have the peace of God, when the storms of life began to rage in your heart. In the storm, God will give you peace. He said to peace, my peace I leave with you, not as the world give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me, for in my Father's house there are many mansions. And if it was not so, I would have told you. He says, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. What a mighty God we serve. Praise be to God. What a mighty God we serve. Let me read this again. It says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Then he says, which is not another, verse 7. But there be some who that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, verse 8, are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. Verse 9. As we said before, and say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that we have received, let him be a curse. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? Or if I yet please men, how should not be, I should not be the servant of Christ. If I if I if I choose to please men, if I desire to please men more than God, I cannot be a servant. You can't serve two masters. You can't serve one and love the other. You have to make a decision. Who 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 are you here for? What what is your purpose? God gives us purpose. Hallelujah. And it's not uh, a temporary pur purpose. You, you know, the, the purpose and the visions that I had when I was a young man in my 20s, and now I'm older, praise be to God, those visions have changed. I see through a glass clearly now those things that uh, I thought was important, I thought was necessary. Sometimes they were. But for the time I'm living in now, with the age I am now, those things have gone on. It doesn't matter. I see it clearer. If I could have solved some of the things I see and know now, I would have made different decisions from back then. But thanks be to God, the peace of God, the presence of God, the power of God, hallelujah, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I was able to continue to walk by faith and not by sight, and I, as I begin to walk my faith and not by sight, I begin to, to learn more about who he is and trust him in, in the storm. The storms of life begin to rage, but I begin to trust him. 
people begin to walk away. Circumstances begin to change in the natural. But in the spirit, man, hallelujah, it was consistency. Praise be to God. I was able to continue to walk by faith. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, it says, for I, for verse 10, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. How do you make this decision? You receive a revelation of God's word. I received a revelation. Hallelujah. And as you, God begins to reveal his word to you, hallelujah, through the clarity of the spirit, you begin to change your thinking and change the way you used to be. You become a new creation, a new creature in Christ. Jesus, old things have passed away and all things become new. He says, I should not be the servant of Christ. For, it, for Look verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God or do I seek to please men? Huh? For if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of Christ. Now who you... Who are you going to please? You want to please men? Hallelujah. Listen, I should not be a servant of Christ. It, it, it says, for I, 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 verse 10, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Verse 11 says, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man. How would you receive it? Ah, somebody said, I received it through my education. I received it through my parents. I received it. Those might be avenues that help guide you and lead you in those directions. But the Bible says, as many as received him. To them gave you power to become sons and daughters of the Most High God. So how have you received him? As many as received him to them. You have to receive him into your heart, into your life. And thank God for the books. Thank God for the education. Thank God. Hallelujah for the wisdom of this world. But it's all to naught. The deceitfulness of riches choked the word of God. We become unfruitful in the things of God. Hallelujah. It says, but I certify, brethren, that the gospel was which was preached of me is not after man. Let's go back up to 10. He says, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, talking to believer, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. I was taught it, not of man, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. It was a divine intervention. Thank God for the divine, it was a divine intervention. Intervention. Hallelujah. We thank God. Again, we thank God for the education. We thank God for those things that brought us uh, to another level in the natural. But if this earthly house of this tabernacle was to dissolve, the scripture says we have another building, a house not made with hands. And it says it's eternal in the heavens. What you going to do about that? Yes, you took care of this outer man. You closed it. You kept it clean. You, you were healthy. You worked out. You did all the things necessary to make sure. And you should take care of this body. You should take care of this mind. But we ought to know, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who thought of not robbery be with God. We ought to have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. We ought to walk in the spirit that we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's a divine intervention. Look at it. For I neither received it of man. Huh? Divine intervention. Neither was I taught it. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. But by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For verse 13 says, Ye have heard of my conversation 
in times past, he says in the Jews' religion, listen that Paul, how that beyond measure, what did he do? He said, I persecuted the church of God. And watch this. And wasted it. He had no regard for the church. Again, he says, for you have heard of my conversation in what? Times past. In the Jews' religion. What, what is your time past? What were you involved in? What did you give up? Hallelujah. Forgetting those things which are behind, and we're called to do what? Press towards the mark. In times past, underline that circle that, you're talking about a divine intervention. In the Jews' religion, it's more, it, 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 he sees himself now operating in relationship more than religion. We get tied up in our religion and we miss the relationship. How that beyond measure, I pers persecuted the church. Not persuaded, but I persecuted the church of God and I wasted it. You know what somebody say, I, I waste you? I we, the, the street terminology about being wasted. He said, I wasted it. Praise be to God. And profited in the Jews religion above many my equal in my own nation. He, listen, he says, and profited. How about that? He wasted, but then he profited in the Jews of verse 14 religion above many my equals in my own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. Hear that? Listen, a circle is, he profited? What did he profit in? In the Jewish religion, above many of my equals. <clears throat> in my own nation, among my own people. Look, being more exceeding, huh? Zealous of the traditions of my father, of my fathers, make a plural. Hmm? But when it pleased God, let me read this again. I, I, listen to what he just, don't, let's not just shoot over this. We're talking about the divine intervention. Let's go back. Let's go back, praise be to God, to verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. You got a revelation. You got to have a revelation. God wants to reveal his word to you. You got a revelation. For I neither received it of man, neither was taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm. Divine intervention. Verse 13. For ye have heard of my conversation in times past, in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure, what did he do? He says, I persecuted the church of who? Of God. And he says, I wasted it. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> and profited in the Jews' religion, he, he profited, he profited with, it. you can profit in some bad stuff. It's a temporary profit. It's a profit that's corrupt and don't last. But he says, I profited in the Jews' religion above many of my equals in my own nation. He says, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my father. He took it, in other words, he took it to the next level. He didn't just say, I'm going to, you know, I live this way, I just, no, he took it completely to the next level on his zealousness to, to root out anything other than what he believed and knew. But he says, but when it pleased God, hallelujah, when it pleased God, somebody said, please God, hallelujah, God is in control. When it pleased God, I want to. I just want to look real quick before we continue on to that at Acts chapter nine, one and two. It says, "And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, he went unto the high priest." You said, "What are you reading?" We're going back over here. It says in, in, in Galatians where it says. For ye have heard of my conversation in times past in the Jewish religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church and wasted it. Look at Acts 9, 1 and 2. It says, 
and Saul yet breathing out threatening and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, against the disciples of the Lord, against the disciples of the Lord. What did he do? He went unto the high priest and desired of him, look this, look at this, him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of the way, we know when we talk about the way, we talk about Jesus. It was called the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. It's called the way. Hallelujah. Whether they were men or women, watch this. He might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. I want you to get that. Mm. Mm. You hear that? Get that in your spirit. He says, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. So he says again in verse 14, 13 and 14, for ye have heard of my conversation in times past in the Jewish religion, how that be our measure. What did he do? He said, I persecuted the church. We just read in Acts 9, 1 through 2, 2. 1, 9. Chapter 9, verse 1 through 2. Uh, uh, and persecuted the church of God and wasted it and pointed and profited, I'm sorry, in the Jews' religion above many, my equal in my own nation, bringing more exceedingly zealous, being more exceedingly jealous, being more exceedingly jealous, zealous, of the tradition of my father. Verse 15 says, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. We thank God for his grace, his unmarried favor, all these things Paul did. Hallelujah. God's grace overshined everything that he did. And, 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 and if it worked for him, it'll work for us as well. Hallelujah. He says, then, when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, somebody shout grace. Thank God for God's grace, his mercy. Thank God, hallelujah, that he had upon us. Thank God Paul could say it, but we can say the same thing. Amen, in the name of Jesus. He says, verse uh, 16, it says, to reveal us, to reveal his son in me. What did, what did he do? It says, God separated me from my mother's womb, called me by his grace. Watch this. To reveal his son in me. We're talking about our calling. We thank God he called us out of darkness into light to reveal his son in me so he can reveal his son in us that we say we, say I. It says that I, but it says that we might preach him among the heathens he says, immediately I confer it, not with the flesh and uh, blood. Because this flesh will talk you out of witnessing. This flesh will talk you out of praying, out of reading, out of studying. You, you don't think so? You might think it's not a big deal. Some of you are so caught up in the flesh, you don't even recognize when your heart says it's time to read and your flesh says, I'm too tired, I can't do it. Praise be to God. We, 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 we forget how when the Spirit speaks to us and say, don't go, and we go anyway, hallelujah, we find ourselves trapped in some dark areas when the Spirit man, praise, praise God, says, uh-uh, don't go there. Don't talk to that person. Don't buy that. Don't, and we find, we find ourselves doing it anyway. Verse 16, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathens immediately. I confer it not with flesh and blood. You say, well, I am not called to preach. Yes, you are. We are called him to go in all the world and preach the gospel. He didn't say you had to be the bishop or the pastor or the elder. All he wants you to do is be a witness. All he wants you to do is witness the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we close, hallelujah, with these last few verses, he says that I might preach him among the heathens, the unbelievers. And he says, immediately, I confer it not with flesh and blood. If you start allowing flesh and blood to get involved in this process, 
Hallelujah. It'll, it'll cause you to be lazy. It'll cause you not to read. It'll cause you not to study. It'll cause you not to praise. It'll, it'll cause you not to fellowship. And some of you listening to me today have stopped all those things. You don't read no more. You don't study. You don't go to church no more. You don't even read the Bible anymore. Praise be to God. You don't even pray anymore. You stop. Hallelujah. You're conferring with flesh and blood. He said, no. Immediately, I confer not. I confer not with flesh and blood. Don't give it to flesh and blood, praise be to God. Flesh and blood, the Bible says, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Look at verse 17. Neither will I, he said, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Hmm? It says, and then after three years, huh, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter. Hmm? and abode with him for 15 days. But other of the apostles saw a nun save James, the Lord's brother. Verse 20 says, Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Hmm? Afterwards I came into the region of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the church of Judea, which was in Christ. But they had heard only that he, watch this, which persecuted us in times past, now preached the faith which was once, which once he destroyed. Huh? But they, I'm going to close here, had heard only. What are people hearing about you? Are you still the same old Shane? Are you still the same old John? Are you still the same old Linda? Are you still? Bible says, any man being Christ, we're a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. He says, hallelujah. He says, verse 22, and was an unknown by face unto the church of Judea, which was in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preached the faith which once he destroyed. Look at the last verse. And they glorified God in me. They glorified God in Paul. They saw, they saw what God had done to him and they began to glorify God. Lord, we thank you for your word. We pray. Uh, time is so short when it comes down to reading and studying, but we pray that people will go back and read your word. Hallelujah. The gospel which was preached, hallelujah, is not after men. You said all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Lord, we pray that the believers would begin to read your word. Study your word. We pray, Father God, who don't know Jesus Christ. Paul is a good example of how God can turn it around. How God, no matter how bad uh, your life has been, how corrupt, hallelujah, how sinful you were. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Why don't you give your life over to Jesus? If you've never given your life over to Jesus, and you go back and read, hallelujah, hallelujah, the scriptures, and, and, and begin to read even how Paul lived his life and how he persecuted the church, hallelujah, you might say, well, you know, my life was so bad, and you just don't know, Bishop, you don't know what I've been going through, you don't know what I've done, I've been in some dark places, but God, hallelujah, such his son Jesus Christ to die on Calvary that your sins might be forgiven. Hallelujah. If you confess the Lord Jesus, won't you confess him to your life right now? I don't care how bad your life has been. Listen up, Paul. Hallelujah. I don't care. You need to get knocked off our horses, high horses of sin, and allow Christ to come in. Say, Dearly Father, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross. and rose from the dead. Right now, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart today. Come into my heart to stay. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for delivering me out of the power of darkness into your marvelous light. 
And Lord, I let my light shine that men see my good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. God, you get all the glory. You get all the honor and the praise. Lord Jesus, thank you for your salvation. Lord, thank you for those souls who giving their heart over to Jesus today. Hallelujah. All, our churches are open all over the country. We pray, Father God, that those who've given their heart over to Jesus through this ministry today and those who've given their life over to Jesus all around the country today on this Sunday morning, Father God, we pray right now for their soul. We pray for the peace of God and the presence of God to flow like never before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you for joining us and for reading out of the book of Galatians chapter one. That's where we came from today. And you can go to our website at www.stg-ct.org. If you want to give, you can go to the website. If you want to see our other social media sites, it's on there as well. And also, if you want to send us an email, that's also on there. So once again, we thank you thank for you. joining us in Jesus name. Amen. And we do not own the rights to this music. <laughs>